How concerned are you about this restart? Well, of course I'm concerned now. It has nothing to do with the NBA. Um, in concert with its Players Association, in concert with the respective networks, and obviously Walt Disney, because it's Disney World that we're talking about here. It's because of the leadership of the governor in, in Florida that he clearly has not handled this situation as adroitly um, as he should have. The reality <laughs> is is that uh, they reopened a little bit too early. They haven't emphasized wearing masks or gloves or engaging in social distancing. We've seen this evidence literally uh, in it is literally invaded our airwaves. And so when we look at it from that perspective, that definitely elevates our cause for concern because when you don't have the kind of leadership that's necessary, it can compromise everything. And that's the problem here, which is why I've been a proponent of having a backup plan. I'm, I'm fully aware that Jay is absolutely right when he says it's not going to happen because it was confirmed while Jay and I were debating this over a week ago. There is no plan B. It's Florida or nothing. But I made the argument that it should be in New York City. Why? Because New York City was the epicenter. And I'm not being political here by any stretch of the imagination. Remember, I'm a registered independent. I don't get caught up in all that. I don't trust either side. They all, they all are suspect to me. But there is no denying that as it specifically pertains to COVID, the COVID-19 pandemic, that Andrew Cuomo has done a sensational job in New York. There is no question about that. You know, you people accusing them of grandstanding or whatever. All I know is that New York went from the epicenter to flattening that curve, people are walking the streets, they're wearing their mask, even then when they don't have on their mask because they're jogging or whatever, they're engaging in social distancing, you don't see clusters of people hanging together, they're living their lives, but they're living their lives while embracing a new normal to some degree, recognizing the fact that we have not gotten completely past this, 32 plus states have spiked at the very least, we're expecting additional spikes to continue to occur. The fall is coming, which is going to make it even worse. I think in light of what we've seen from the leadership here in the state of New York, with, with the Barclays Center and Madison Square Garden, even St. John's University, even though that may not be a long shot, the point is you can find places to play NBA basketball. In my perfect world, I wish that it could be in New York, but... If Adam Silver and the NBA says they're comfortable in their bubbled atmosphere, even though it's in the state of Florida, in Orlando, where spikes have been taking place, I'm going to flow with them. I think we're all certainly concerned about having the season go forward down there considering what's happening. But I think Stephen A. brings up an interesting dynamic between the two. Is like if you bring it to New York City, potentially there is no bubble. Like you can't bubble New York City. You can't block off the streets of New York City. So there is a chance that you could argue that it might be safer to be in a bubble in a high risk area than it would be to be outside of a bubble in a low risk area. But I think that the fact of the matter that they're holding it at Walt Disney World, it's a company that – or. Uh, organization, the entire company, understands how logistics works quite well, and the NBA is very serious about it. It's a small number of players who take this very seriously, it would appear. I think they're going to be all right if they all get into the bubble and no one on any team go goes into the bubble with the virus. I feel like we're going to go in, we're going to have a season. It's likely that some people might catch it, but I suspect that they'll be all over it, and, and there's a chance that once they get in there, they'll be safer. There won't be any anybody... Uh, having too much contact with anyone outside of it, except for the employees who come in and out. So I feel fairly confident, I guess, as confident as you can be in a time right now, is once they go into the bubble, I think we'll finish the season. It makes me feel more confident, honestly, about the NBA than I do about football, even though that's way off in the future. There is no bubble contingency that I've heard of in football, and that concerns me having a bunch of different teams in different cities just living their lives as if nothing was going on, Jay. I'm with you. I'm with you on football, Nick. The advantage that football has to a degree is that they can wait and they can watch how other professional leagues are handling them going back to market and then make changes upon that. But I, I agree with you that their hands are full within football. It, it, it's interesting. A couple of things to do a deeper dive here, Stephen A. Too, is that you know I'm curious how what will be mandated of staffers of Disney World staffers that are able to go in and out, right? And uh, I've heard a lot of people have conversations about this because, you know, that, that's a other silo that the NBA cannot affect. So, you know, those staffers who aren't making a lot of money, by the way, you know, will have a chance to go to and from their families. And, and how ultimately will Disney World and the NBA come to an agreement on, you know, how to make sure that those people 
you know, aren't coming into tune with other people that can get affected to bring that, you know, COVID-19, if it comes back to the campus, that, that's going to be something that I'm looking to hear a little bit more detail on how they're going to handle that. If they're going to pay the staffers way more money. Uh, if they're going to try to keep the staffers mm -hmm. on the premise as well, along with the players. But I, I'm with you. Like, are there concerns? Of course. This is going to be a series of ebbs and flows. But we are going to have a season. We are going to have playoffs. And I, I will say this, guys. The way Adam Silver, and I've known him for a very long time in my life. I've had multiple conversations with him. I've shot him emails randomly. He's responded back so quickly. Who the hell am I for him to respond back that quickly? Um, he's always been extremely judicious. He's been pragmatic. He's been in lock and step with the MBPA. Him and Michelle Roberts have been lock and mm -hmm. step with their communication. Have there been players that have came out like Kyrie and Dwight and Avery Bradley decide not to play? Yes, it is subjective to everybody, but that is the kind of conversations you want to have. I mean, look, there are a lot of people who are talking about social injustice. It would not be right as a league that is predominantly black not to have people that felt that way. I understand that. I hear that. But this is also about money, Stephen A. Let's be real about this too, Nick. This is about yeah. money, and this is about the future earnings well, of just not the players who are currently playing, also the next wave of people to keep a league mm -hmm. sustainable that has made a lot of black people wealthy moving forward as well. Well, first of all, thank you for uh, uh, showing the world that you watch First Take on a regular basis when you're not contributing to the show, because that's what I've been saying for the last month. The bottom line is, is that this is about money. We understand that the players recognize the fact that if you don't play this summer, then ultimately the NBA is going to sit up there. The losses that it accrued from the cancellation of a season combined uh, with the projected losses mm -hmm. is essentially going to give them permission to sit, there, sit up there, re uh, rip up the collective bargaining agreement, renegotiate it obviously with lesser dollars coming to the player 